Hello and welcome to another water drop workflow video where we'll be lo looking at uh, real-time controls in InfoWorks ICM. Um, this is kind of a follow-up to uh, one that I did previously with some other RTCs. Uh, this is just an example of uh, a couple more. Uh, so who is this for? Uh, engineers and utilities that want to represent real-time controls as they are in their system. Um, InfoWorks ICM users that need a crash course using uh, some different RTCs that they might not be familiar with. And then also just uh, users that would need a more realistic and accurate model. The workflow is going to be looking at two RTCs in this video where we're going to be uh, controlling um, the uh, emptying of a tank using logic operators. Um, we'll also be looking at a PID or proportional integral differential rules in order to prevent uh, maximum flow to be uh, to be treated, not to be exceeded uh, in, in a part of the model. So starting off here, we're going to take a look at the logical operator example that I have in here. Uh, in this example, um, I have two tanks, one uh, at D that's represented as a node with a large shaft and chamber area along with tank I here. Um, we want to set up this RTC so that uh, this uh, link here, this variable orifice, uh, will open if uh, tanks I and D are at a certain uh, capacity. Uh, it'll also be set up so that this pump, um, K.3, um, is turned on so that it's able to handle that extra flow in there. Uh, so opening up the RTC editor in here, I do have a handful of ranges and rules already set up just because of how this model got set up um, that, that are needed before. Uh, but the first step in what we want to control is to insert the regulator uh, G1 uh, in here. So this variable orifice where we're going to have it set up so that the rates of change are going to be one uh, cubic meter per second um, for both of those. Uh, the next step in here is to insert uh, a dependent, uh, in this case the range. Um, we have some universal ones set up here for uh, tank D, but we want to set up one for tank I as well. Um, so we're going to name this 80% uh, of I um, going in here, so that, um, and I guess I1, uh, since it's the first one, and uh, just setting this up so that it's above the datum. Um, for uh, our tank I. So uh, the um, uh, value in here that we need, um, that it would be, um, you know, 50 per, or 80 percent full in this case would be uh, 81.6 meters. Um, I believe the bottom of that tank is, is around uh, 79, so 81.6 being the top of that, or the 80 percent of that. Uh, next step is going to be adding in some logic. Uh, so this is going to combine uh, the uh, levels in tank D along with the level in tank I here. Um, so we're going to name this uh, open uh, that variable uh, orifice. Uh, and the operator here is going to be and since we want both the conditions in tank D and tank I to be true. Um, this is going to be set for um, being above 50% in the uh, D case up here, and then 80% uh, full of that tank I. Last step in here is going to be adding in a rule. Uh, so this rule is going to be uh, controlling that variable orifice, um, so the uh, orifice there, uh, and then just setting the position of it to be uh, 1.89 uh, cubic meters per second. Uh, next step in here, so we've got all that set up so that it's uh, going to open that G1 link um, prior to um, when once the uh, tank levels in uh, um, D and I reach uh, certain values. Uh, the next step is to add in a second regulator for the pump control. In this pump control, uh, we need to add in an additional range, which would be uh, linked to the um, Link to uh, tank I again, so uh, same kind of setup that we had before, 80% of I, uh, and we're going to name this too, so we get some difference, uh, different naming conventions going on, and again controlling the I there. Um, again, step um, um, setting this up so that uh, once the take uh, reaches 80% full um, at 81.6, um, getting that to turn on. Uh, next step in here is going to be adding in some logic. 
Um, so the logic again being similar to what we had for that G1 link uh, controlling the uh, pump though in this case, so K3 on and the operator is going to be and along with uh, those two um, variables being set to uh, true. Next step is to add in the rules that we want, uh, the default condition uh, where either one of these is not true is going to set the pump um, to an off condition. And then finally, uh, once those two conditions are met, uh, we will uh, turn it on. Um, so updating that to uh, switching on. Once we have all that set up, we can run the simulation. Um, uh, for this case, I do have the uh, simulation already set up um, and, and run. Um, so I'm just gonna pull up the results that we have in this case with the different windows we have here. So we can see uh, the orifice at G1 and then also the pump at K3. Um, where uh, we can look at the different times here of when we have um, tank D and tank I uh, set up. Um, so if we remember back to our rules uh, that in tank D we needed to get to a, an elevation of uh, 89.5 and then in tank uh, I needed to get up to 81 uh, 0.6. Um, so uh, looking at the times here, um, 89.5, uh, we get there roughly at the um, three, uh, third hour and 10 minutes. Uh, and then in tank I, we get up to uh, 81.6 around the uh, two hour and 30 minute mark. Um, we can see over here on the right, um, if we're controlling that appropriately, um, yep, so at um, roughly uh, three hours and five minutes, um, we can see uh, the uh, pump and the orifice uh, opening up and the pump turning on, uh, both at the same time uh, prior to that when tank I reached our logic. Um, we are not turning on. Um, same thing with the pump over here. It's not until uh, both of those conditions are met, um, so we are validating that this is working correctly. So next up we have the PID or the Proportional Integral Differential um, uh, RTC uh, setup here, uh, where again, we're gonna be looking at tank D and tank I, um, but this time releasing it through um, D.2 and I.2 uh, with the caveat that we don't wanna send uh, more than a certain amount or a certain amount of flow through um, this H1 link out to the um, out to the outfall where the wastewater treatment plant would be. Um, in, in this as well, we're going to have tank D uh, drain first, um, while tank I will drain after it. Uh, pulling up the RTC editor, uh, we do have to insert some um, uh, global rules here uh, to be able to have that controller uh, set up on H1. So we're just going to name this sensor uh, since we're uh, basically the sensor that's on uh, H1 in order to um, have the amount of flow through there with the minimum value uh, uh, being zero and the maximum being one. Next up, we set up the uh, controller. Um, so this is going to be um, ultimately what we uh, use with the PID and setting those coefficients there. Um, with this, I'll just name it control. control. Um, and the type is going to be uh, PID. Uh, this measurement is going to be uh, essentially every time the, um, the amount of time it uh, takes a look at these uh, rules and, and getting to the set point. And then the sensor, of course, is gonna be our sensor uh, H.1 there. Um, with the uh, proportional integral and differential uh, components in here, these are essentially the um, uh, different coefficients that go into uh, the equation and there's lots of uh, resources online to kind of better understand what these uh, mean, but essentially each one of these um, has some effect on um, the oscillation that it goes uh, through when uh, moving from um, uh, the uh, reference point to um, what it is in actual reality, kind of giving a, a constant feedback loop there. Um, for this example, I, I know my coefficients uh, for something that's going to be acceptable um, are those that are listed there. 
Next up is going to be inserting the regulators. Um, so again, we're going to start off with D.2 uh, and draining that tank uh, D1. In this, I'm going to have some initial and um, uh, different rates of change here, um, just being the initial being one cubic meter and then the, um, and then the rates of change being one uh, cubic meter per second as well. Next up is going to be adding in uh, the range that we need. So this is going to be um, taking a look basically, at, uh, or taking a look at when uh, tank D is going to be empty. Uh, so it is going to be a height above a certain datum in the node uh, D, where uh, we're, we're basically going to say that the bottom of the tank is uh, 87.2. Um, so. Uh, once we look at the uh, description and the validation, once we get some of these other uh, rules and things in here, um, we'll, we'll be able to get a good picture of uh, what exactly all this means, uh, where we're just going to have the default position as uh, zero. Um, so this is going to be, unless subsequent uh, rules are true, the, uh, the uh, set point for this variable orifice D2, uh, D.2 is going to be set to zero. The next rule is going to be um, once the um, uh, for the the sensor in here um, for the uh, model, it's going to be based on the control uh, for the controller here, and the fixed set point uh, is 0.66. So let's so get that updated. And we go back and look at the uh, flow here. Uh, so unless subsequent rules are true, D.2 is going to be set to zero. Um, but if the upstream flow in link H.1 is between uh, 0 and 1, then the D.2 will uh, use the controller to maintain a flow of 0.66. Um, so again, using that PID uh, control to be able to uh, make sure that the flow in H1 is um, uh, set at 0.66. Next up is going to be um, uh, adding in a different regulator for I.2. Uh, pretty similar setup here uh, where we do have uh, the ranges uh, set up here. Um, also the initial and the rates of change being one uh, cubic per meter, uh, uh, cubic meter per second. Uh, with the ranges set up here, um, again controlling, uh, you know, if, if I, um, if tank I um, is um, full, um, or F, um, and, and then F uh, tank D is empty. So uh, setting this up as I full, we're again going to be looking at the datum um, and uh, tank I, I there. Um, so essentially anything that is above um, 80.1, uh, meaning that it's um, uh, full there. And then making sure that tank D is empty as well. Um, so again, uh, another um, D and D uh, rule for that. Uh, so setting that uh, above the datum for uh, tank D and uh, making sure that the uh, value is going to be below 87.2, indicating that it's empty. Uh, to combine these, uh, like we did in the previous example, previous example, we're going to add in some logic here. Um, so this is going to be uh, set up so that we know when to empty uh, D and we're setting up an AND condition. So both of these uh, rules or ranges need to be uh, true before we're able to enact any kinds of rules. Um, so uh, next up is going to be setting up those rules. Um, so this is going to be the default condition and it's just going to be the position uh, set up here. So it's going to be uh, zero. Uh, so again, um, this is going to be if both of these are true, um, if, unless subsequent rules are true, this is going to be set to zero. So until tank D empties and we're below this 87.2, uh, we're going to have I2 set up as um, being closed. Um, the next rule is going to be set up so that uh, once these two things are true, uh, we will begin to empty the uh, tank here. Uh, so looking at the logic, um, and controlling that with the, our, our new controller here, um, the fixed amount being 0.66 uh, cubic meters uh, per second. I've already got that run in uh, the results here. So taking a look at some of the different components in here, we've got uh, graphs for tank, uh, the level in tank D uh, and tank I, 
um, also the flow through the conduit H.1, and then the regulator state and flow through each one of those orifices that we're controlling. So if we remember back, um, we did want to limit the flow to uh, 0.66. And so you can see in the orifice uh, D.2 um, for the time period, uh, we've got some um, basically extra flows from other parts of the network coming in here. So um, we do have the flow going through um, H. Uh, H.1 at 0.66, which is why we haven't um, opened up our D.2 because we're trying to limit the amount of flow going through it um, to that amount. You can see where we're starting to uh, drop in some cases that we've got um, the, the startup of our flow here. So right around the eight hour, eight, yeah, right around the eight hour, uh, we start to get some um, oscillations here uh, where we're opening up that flow subsequently getting some uh, drops in the flow and then back up to that 0.66 as it uh, controls through there. Um, as we get to the point that um, we're, we're you know, nowhere close to um, having the 0.66 flow through the H.1, uh, we get the uh, regulator to uh, turn on until we ultimately get to the point of draining our tank D. We can see here roughly around the 24 hour mark, uh, it starts to shut off, uh, which would mean that it's uh, empty at that point. And we can see all those oscillations in there um, where you can uh, see it turning off, on and off. Um, that regulator, um, it's kind of bouncing around that, that set point that we're looking for, the 0 0.66. Um, and we finally do settle on 0 0.6 at least. Uh, so not quite uh, there exactly, but um, th that's what I mean with those oscillations for the uh, different PID uh, controls in there. Uh, going back to our um, I, uh, it's roughly uh, the same uh, time, that 12 hour mark, and again, those oscillations. Um, so we're uh, trying to match that flow that's going through there, um, and we do get up to that 0.6 um, finally, uh, and then the regulator uh, just staying on um, once we get to the point of draining that out. So wrapping up here, um, with the, any advice to uh, folks out there using RTCs and building them, uh, try to be intentional about what you're trying to accomplish uh, when you are laying out those different steps. Um, certainly use the validation and uh, description of the RTC to uh, kind of read through it and make sure what you think is going to happen uh, will happen. Of course, uh, pulling up graphs and things like that um, and checking times to make sure that it's operating in the, in the correct way. There's also lots of tutorials in the help manual, uh, so please feel free to check out that for more information.